Hi everyone, it's Skina. In this video, I'll tell you about how I got this facial separate dermatitis and what was the process. As I said in the last video, it can be a necessary process to understand the diseases, so please be sure to watch this. The first reason I got this disease was because of the AMTS procedure I had at the Korean Oriental Clinic in 2007. First, for those who don't know what AMTS is, let me briefly explain what MTS is. It's a procedure in which the skin is rubbed with a small roller densely packed with short needles. Nowadays, I know that you can also buy this roller on the internet. Anyway, that would hurt your skin, right? This is a procedure that uses the principle that the wound heals and the skin grows better. An AMTS is just auto-MTS, so in the MTS procedure, a person manually pushes the roller. In the AMTS procedure, a machine looking like a pencil punches the needles like a sewing machine. After all, it's the same procedure, but it's only the difference between manual and automatic. And it's a similar principle to the Fraxel laser procedure. However, Fraxel punches the skin with laser beams, but MTS with needles. Anyway, I was supposed to get the procedure for five times. And in the first procedure, there was no problem. But from the second procedure, the facial separate dermatitis began a little. And after getting the third procedure, it severely took over my entire face. Around the mouth, around the nose, around the eyebrows, cheeks, and so on. If I think about it now, the doctor was a very quack. Because it was supposed to have recovery time at least two weeks to a month between the procedure. But I was busy, so I asked if I could shorten the recovery time to 12 to 13 days. And then he just approved. But if there was a problem in the second procedure, as a doctor, he had to detect the issue and stop it and take some measures. But he just did third procedure without thinking. But I didn't take it that seriously at the time. Rather, in my school, my friends were worried that there was something wrong. But after the third procedure, my face went very bad, so I stopped the procedure. Anyway, I didn't think it was a big deal, and just thought it would be better if I took a little rest. So, after taking some rest for about a month or two, I saw a doctor at a university hospital. And the doctor told me with very serious tone that it was difficult to make a definitive diagnosis, so you need to take a biopsy. He said, this could be atopic dermatitis, psoriasis, or something else. I can't decide with just looking at it like this. And he said, you'll have an incision at the side of the eyebrow by one square centimeter, and the little scar will remain. From this point on, I also sensed that it was a little bit serious. Actually, I never heard of terms such as psoriasis and separate dermatitis before, but I didn't take it very seriously though. I just thought it would be better if I applied some medicine and rested. And because I didn't want a scar on my face, I decided to go see a famous dermatologist in my hometown, Daegu. Fortunately, in Daegu Clinic, the biopsy was without an incision. However, after the biopsy, the doctor said, this is separate dermatitis, and it's an intractable disease, so it is impossible to cure and it must be looked after until you die. It was a bolt from the blue. Oh, come on. What kind of incurable disease that can't be cured for life with a needle wound? It doesn't make sense, I thought. But what could I do? This was true. Anyway, taking some break in home, I took the medicines as I was instructed and also applied steroid ointment and the disease got better. So I thought hopefully again, this is not a big deal. It'll get better soon. I know that. About after a week, I first heard about the dangers of steroid ointment from a friend who'd had atopic dermatitis for a long time. So I looked up on the internet and found that steroids could be really dangerous. So from that time on, I was scared and I took the medicines or steroid ointment insincerely. I mean, sometimes I took them, but sometimes I didn't. And I also stopped visiting the dermatologist. But fortunately, maybe because I took some medicine, 
all other parts got better, but the area around the mouth, especially the upper part of the lips, remained red. And since then, as time passed, it kept getting a little worse and worse from this state. If I think about it now, as steroids ointments are dangerous, if you use steroid ointment in the very early stage, or in the acute stage, I think it'll not become chronic and will return to the original healthy skin. And especially in the early stage, before becoming chronic, the color of the affected area of my face was bright red or pink. But after becoming chronic, it turned into dark red. Anyway, for more than 10 years since then, until I figured out the cure, I had a habit of checking the condition of the affected area by looking in the mirror dozens of times a day. So when I was in relatively good condition, I was relieved. And when I was in bad condition, I was frustrated. It was my life for more than 10 years. To others, it would have seemed like I just lived a normal life. But actually, I was always in a state of pain with a knife in my heart. So in the end, I only spent money on getting facial separate dermatitis. Actually, save the other parts, but the area around my mouth was baby skin. But after the procedure, wrinkles appeared and the side of the nose was slightly dent, and the whole area around the mouth turned red. Especially when it's severe, it was like it was hit by someone. It swelled a little bit, and when pressed by my finger, it pitted like a sponge. Also, it was always itchy. Anyway, when it's serious, I sometimes applied steroid ointment and then left it alone and repeated and repeated again. In the end, I just lived about one to two years without applying any medicines. But when it got seriously worse, I went see a dermatologist where I tried not to visit again. However, the effect of the medicines was only that time anyway, so I was disappointed and just used them for two to three days and left them alone. So I decided to go to a Korean Oriental clinic. For your information, it's like Korean traditional Oriental clinic. It's like alternative medicine for modern medicine. Anyway, in modern medicine, it is said to be intractable disease, but in Oriental medicine advertisements, they said it could be cured, so I had no choice but to be attracted. So I went to a famous Oriental clinic, but the price of the medicine was expensive. At that time, the money was also a problem, but the real problem was that I felt like they were not interested in the patient, but only wanted money, money, money. And they strongly guaranteed a cure, but who would suffer from this disease if it was cured by spending money? However, the reality is, no matter how strong they claim, skin diseases such as atopic dermatitis, psoriasis, separate dermatitis, perioral dermatitis, and facial flushing are still intractable skin diseases. Also, I heard a lot of people saying that after having treatment in oriental medicine, it improved once and then recurred easily. So I couldn't trust. And the theory of oriental medicine looks illogical and superstitious. So from that point on, I gave up the oriental medicine and left the disease for more than seven years in despair. What was lucky was I was a little ruddy, so if people didn't look closely, they just didn't notice. And though every time I went see a doctor, I used to tell them that I had the disease after getting this AMTS procedure, they all said that it was difficult to pinpoint that it was because of the procedure. For your information, dermatology clinics also implement MTS or AMTS procedure. And maybe I had some factors of separate dermatitis. However, without this procedure, I would have been able to live without growing the disease seriously. But it seems that the disease that could have been suppressed broke out in earnest because of the crushing of the skin barrier by the procedure. So I just lived without any hope. And from about 2017, it started getting worse and harder to bear. Symptoms such as scaly, flaky rash, dryness, tightness, and 
itchiness were getting worse and worse, so I couldn't leave it alone anymore, and I started to scour the internet to do research to solve this problem. So the conclusion I made was, because the skin barrier was broken, so I had to protect my skin. In fact, I'd lived without applying lotion or toner before I got separate dermatitis, because the alcohol substance didn't work for me. It caused a lot of tingling and rash on my face. And after I got this disease, this sensitivity became much more severe. So when I applied the lotion, the area around my mouth became completely red, not to mention the toner. However, with such a weak skin condition, I could no longer be exposed to the external environment unprotected, so I developed my own lotion. The premise and rationale for the development was to protect the skin barrier as it was weakened. I'll introduce this lotion in another video. Anyway, I hung in for about two years with this lotion, but it didn't mean the condition got better. It just meant the lotion worked as a barrier, making it less affected by the surroundings, such as too cold, too hot, or too dry weather. And the color of the lotion was a little bit yellowish, so it was similar to my skin color, which made it less reddish, though the effect wasn't big. And additionally, you can make it whitish too, if you want to. Anyway, at this time, the rash between my eyebrows only appeared sometimes when I was tired, but around my mouth became chronic already. And after about two years of my life with this lotion, by March 2019, it started getting really crazy. So the part between eyebrows that was almost fully recovered restarted to come out in a rash, and the part beside the nose and around the mouth also came out in a rash in a bigger space than before, and with the affected part, the whole face was itchy. So as I didn't want to use steroid ointments again, it got so severe that I eventually went to see a dermatologist and got such as protopic, allodel, and steroid ointments, along with medicines for internal use like antihistamine. Antihistamine. As expected, the effect of the medicines was very good and quick. So after about one to two weeks, the urgent big fire was put out, and after about a month, it was completely clean like new skin. It was as if I would be healed completely, and I knew it was a temporary effect, but I still felt like I was in heaven. But at the same time, it was miserable to know that the feeling of being in such heaven was fake. So during the first one or two weeks, I took internal medicines and applied steroid ointment, and then stopped using them and applied protopic or elidol about for a month or two. Then I thought, do I have to apply a month like this for my whole life? That was so painful. I felt like it was like a drug addict, that I couldn't live without applying ointment once or twice a day. This was normal only on the outside, but abnormal on the inside. So I just decided to stop using ointment just with no reason. And even with no applying lotion I developed, but I just put on olive oil. But what was this, huh? There was no problem for about three days. Of course it was a little reddish, but this was enough to live a normal life. So I thought the skin has been strengthened to some extent with applying the medicines and ointments. At the time, I was really happy, like I felt like I was flying in the sky. But those three days were all. The symptoms started again, and I couldn't help using the ointment. Because I didn't use the ointment, the rash came back out, and my whole face was itchy. Now, actually, in the period of applying protopic, the rash was gone away, but itchy was still there. And then I heard that ketoconazole cream was good, so I tried applying it. And then I tried applying Sulantroa cream that was known for killing Demodox that is tiny warm live on human face. And I tried applying Episarum sulfur cream and various oils and lotions, but they didn't work. 
So I frustrated. Do I have to live with applying ointment for my whole life? I really couldn't stand it enough to think of suicide. So I just spent time with no hope. But one day, I can't remember why did I do that, but I didn't eat for a whole day. And suddenly, when I looked at my face in the mirror, I found the condition became much better. And then Eureka! I suddenly realized. So far, I've told you the overall story of how I got this disease and what was the process. As I just said, others do not know, but while suffering from this disease, I'd lived with checking my condition looking at the mirror dozens of times a day, and every moment I would keep comparing this disease and other factors and storing them in the cart of my brain. And after a lot of fragmentary data accumulated, accidentally I starved for a whole day and looked in the mirror, and all of these puzzles were connected together and then I realized what this was. In the next video, I'll tell you about these accumulated data and various attempts I've made. If you have any questions, visit my blog or email me below. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.